You remember that messed up game the Joker played at the end of the Dark Knight with the two boats, one for the civilians, the other for the prisoners? Where he like rigged the two boats with explosives and gave the remote to those explosives to the other boat so that the two boats can blow each other up. And he also said that whoever blows the other boat up will live. And if neither of them blow each other up, he will blow up both of them at midnight. What would you have done in that situation? Will you blow up the other boat? Or will the thought of killing those people weigh too heavily on your conscience? Often when we're faced with this type of problems, it's kind of like a challenge on your morality or like a moral dilemma, if you will. And often people just start to panic because they don't want to kill, but they also don't want to be killed. And it's very easy to be overwhelmed by fear, anxiety, and all those other emotions that will lead you to the dark side. But what if this logical way of solving this problem? What if we can figure out the correct solution using game theory? For those of you who are unfamiliar with game theory, game theory is essentially a study of mathematical models of strategic interactions between rational decision makers. Or simply put, it's a way of analyzing interactions and decision making if people were 100% logical. So in order to solve the Joker's boat problem or boat dilemma, Let's draw up a table. So in Joker's setup, the game essentially involves a decision of two different parties, the boat with the civilians and the boat with the prisoners. So let's just call these A and B. It doesn't really matter which is which because they both have the same decision to blow up the boat or don't blow up the boat. So once again, let's make this even simpler by forgetting about Joker's involvement. Just think of it as two boats or two players deciding whether they should blow up the boat or don't blow up the boat. And in this game, if you die, you get zero points. And if you win, you get one point. Simple enough, right? So if we were to draw up a table right now, we'll get four different outcomes. So one, both will blow each other up, in which case we'll get zero points for team A and B. Second scenario, if A decides to blow up B, but B doesn't blow up A, then A lives and get one point and B gets zero point because they died. Scenario number three, B blows up A, A doesn't blow up B. So B gets one point, A gets zero points. Or finally, in the fourth scenario, neither of the boats blow each other up, in which case both live and get one point. Now let's start off by thinking that all of us are selfish bastards and only care about ourselves. So we only really care about the points we get, we don't care about the points the other team gets. Now I highlight the choices each player will make in each different scenarios. Now let's suppose that A decides to blow up B's boat. In this case, B is essentially indifferent between blowing up A's boat and not blowing up A's boat because in both cases, B is gonna die and get zero points either way. And now suppose that if A decides to not blow up B's boat, in this case, once again, B is gonna be indifferent between blowing up A's boat and not blowing up A's boat because both ways he'll get one point regardless of him blowing up the other boat or not. And the same goes in reverse. If B decides to blow up A's boat, A is indifferent between blow and don't blow. And if B decides to not blow up A's boat, A once again is indifferent between blow and not blow. Now, if we were to highlight the player's strategy given each different scenarios, and we find the point at which both player strategies overlap, basically the box where both players are highlighted, we can essentially find a Nash equilibrium. This is essentially the combination of strategy where both players are happy with where they are and they have no incentive to deviate. In this case, funnily enough, you notice that every single possible combinations on this table has been highlighted, giving us four Nash equilibriums. Now let's just take an example and check. Take this combination for example, where both players decide to blow up the ship. Now let's put ourselves in the shoes of player B. Do we have an incentive to change our strategy? Not really, since either way we're gonna get zero, whether we go with blow or don't blow. Same goes with any combination on this table. You can pause the video and think about it. There is no incentive for anyone to deviate from any of these combination of strategies. It's kind of boring, right? Every combination of strategy is a stable outcome. Matter of fact, the game starts with both players not blowing up each other's ship. So there's really no incentive to make a decision at this point and deviate from the current state of not blowing anybody up. This is precisely why it's important for Joker to come in with the condition where if neither of them blow up each other, then he's gonna blow up both of them at midnight. So this immediately spices up the game because now if both parties choose don't blow, then the outcome is that both of them will die anyway. So they'll get zero, zero. So our game table actually looks something like this. Now once again, let's check for the Nash Equilibrium. If player A decides to blow up B's ship, then B is essentially indifferent between blowing and not blowing, because either way he's gonna get zero. He's dead already, right? However, if A decides to not blow up B, in this case it's actually beneficial for B to blow up A's ship, because if he doesn't, both of them will get blown up and both will get zero anyways. But by blowing up A, 
B will live and get one point. Conversely, if B decides to blow up A, A is essentially indifferent between blowing up B's ship or don't. But if B decides to not blow up A's ship, then A has incentive to blow up B, because one is better than zero. Now the game becomes quite interesting. Notice that every single combination of strategy is in Nash equilibrium, except for the one where neither A nor B decides to blow each other up. So by having the Joker stepping in and saying that if neither of you guys blow each other up, I will blow both of you guys up, this changes the game completely. Joker's condition essentially puts the game in a situation where at least one of the boat will be blown up, whether it's civilians or the prisoners. One of them will die and Joker doesn't care. He wins either way. Now, some of you might be thinking, hey, not all of us are selfish. Some of us cares about the best outcome for everybody. And you're absolutely right. That's what the economists call utilitarianism, which essentially means that every player in the game, instead of only looking out for themselves, they look out for everybody. So instead of trying to maximize their own payoff, they're trying to maximize the overall outcome. Now let's have a look at how this will affect the decision making. So in this case, if both players or both ships are filled with utilitarians, we can essentially simplify these boxes into total payoff rather than individual payoff. So here, instead of zero, zero, we'll just have zero in total. Here, instead of one and zero, we'll just have one in total, and so on and so forth. In this case, if the player was a utilitarian, they will try to arrive at the box with a total payoff of one, because that's the maximum payoff you can have. At least one ship lives. So here, if A decides to blow up B, B will not blow up A. And conversely, if B decides to blow up A, A won't blow up B. At least one ship lives. Now this is slightly better than the situation before where both ships could blow each other up. But even in this case, you'll notice that at least one ship will be blown up. And once again, the Joker wins. So it doesn't matter whether the people on the boats are selfish or utilitarian, the rational approach to this game will always result in casualties. And thus, the Joker always wins. I think this is also why this scene from The Dark Knight is so incredible because by pure logic, at least one of the boats should be blown up, right? But the end result in the movie is that neither the civilians nor the prisoners blew each other up. It proves to the Joker that the people of Gotham are not as corrupt and selfish as he thought they were. And the city is full of people who are ready to believe in good. So ultimately, neither the Joker nor Batman won the battle for Gotham's soul. It was the good people of Gotham.